An integrating technique that allows us to look at an integrand and try to find out if what we would integrate back to is a composite function is something called a U substitution. Remember when we were differentiating a composite function, we took the derivative of the outside action, leaving the inside expression the way it is, and then we multiplied by the derivative of the inside expression, applying the chain rule. And when we did that, that then gave us the derivative of our composite function. Now remember, integration is having what is the derivative or multiple of the derivative of some function and trying to get back to what function it is that it came from. And so when we're trying to go back on that idea of it possibly having been a composite function that was differentiated that gave us that expression that's in our integrand, we've got to try to have some sort of way to look at it clearly of how we then would integrate with our basic indefinite integral rules. This video focuses mainly on those types of indefinite integrals that we can use the U substitution on. So for this first example, I have my indefinite integral quantity x plus 4 times e to the 1 half x squared plus 4x minus 3 dx. Now remember we do not have a way to integrate a product of two functions in general. There isn't a rule. So when I see a multiplication of two functions, if it were polynomials and it wasn't too high of a power to carry out, as you saw in a previous video, which I'll link to this one in the description, you would go ahead and carry out the operations then to be able to integrate it term by term because we can do the separate um, indefinite integrals over each term in an expression. But that's not what we have here. So there's no way we're going to be able to rewrite this as a multiplied out term by term expression for us to integrate. We always look at it, though, to see what we have. Now, in this, I have this x plus 4 times e to the 1 half x squared plus 4x minus 3 power, and then my dx. Well, this expression that's sitting in the power on e, that's like your inside expression, because remember, it was e to power, and then times the derivative of the power when we were differentiating. So this U substitution is you go to a workspace, U equal, and it's just the variable that's kind of commonly used for this idea, whatever the plug-in expression is. So I'm thinking that plug-in expression is the 1 half x squared plus 4x minus 3. So now I don't look back at the problem for now. I'm going to just look at what I assigned the value of u to represent. And I'm actually going to do the differential du and what that's equal to. So again with differential du, that's equal to f prime of x dx. So our du is equal to, well the derivative of 1 half x squared Bring down the 2 times 1 half is 1, x to the first power, and the derivative of 4x is 4, so plus 4. The derivative of the constant term, negative 3, is 0, and then dx for our differential notation. So the tricky thing about u substitutions is that we're really trying to integrate, but in order to try to see a substitution that would give us a clear indication of what we're supposed to do in our indefinite integral, we're actually looking at a derivative over here to see what we have. Now, come back over to the original problem and make your substitutions. So u is going to take the place of this entire 1 half x squared plus 4x minus 3. So I'll have my indefinite integral. I'm going to have my e to the u. And then I have to take out the factor x plus 4 as well as the factor dx. All of that goes out because that's what represent, is represented by the du. So this x plus 4 and this dx together combine to make a du. Now when I look at that, this is exactly one of my indefinite integral rules. The integral of e to the u du is e to the u plus c. 
And again, look back at the indefinite integral um, videos that I've posted and linked in the description of this one for a whole list of the rules so that you can look at what we're doing as we go through this. Then, now that it's integrated, I'm going to take out the u and put back what it is in the original variable. So it's e to the, my u is 1 half x squared plus 4x minus 3. And then plus c. And remember, you can always check these by taking the derivative of what you got as your answer and making sure you get that integrand back. Let's look at the next one. Here's the integral of e to the x over 9 plus e to the x and then dx. Now, if I had a monomial denominator, I would try to write this as the breakup of the fraction, each having that common denominator. But my denominator has two terms, not one term. So that's not going to be anything I can do to help simplify this one. Um, we're working on this u substitution. So then I'm going to try to see what would I let my u equal. Well, this expression of this 9 plus e to the x is in the denominator. And again, I don't have nor will I get any indefinite integral rules that help us integrate a general division of two functions. So we are going to let our u sing this 9 plus e to the x. And then, don't look over here, just look here. Do your differential du is equal to f prime of x dx. So du is equal to, well, the derivative of 9, the term 9 is 0, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and it's the differential notation, so I have dx. After you do that, you look back and see if your substitutions have gotten you anywhere closer to one of those indefinite integral rules. So here, I'm going to have my integral, I have my fraction bar, the 9 plus e to the x is the u, and e to the x times dx, so these two factors together are what have to go out for the du to come in. And then I can put the 1 over u du, or I could do the integral of du over u. Now, if I rewrite this again, there's still a letter in the denominator. So if I don't recognize this one the way it is, I can rewrite this as the integral of u to the negative 1 du. Well, remember, when you have letter base to number power, to integrate that, you add 1 to the exponent and divide by that if your exponent is not negative 1. But if your exponent is negative 1, like this one, that goes back to the natural log of the absolute value of your variable. And remember, the memory device or, or um, Q for that is that if you add 1 to negative 1, you get 0, and you can't divide by 0. So that snag, when you're doing that process with letter base to number power, is a thing that tells you you have to go back to the natural log. So this is the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And then put your expression that you representing the 9 plus e to the x. plus c. And I, in general, need the absolute value. However, if I have an expression that can never be negative, then it's redundant to write the absolute value. So I always kind of take a little look at it and see, are there any values of x where 9 plus e to the x would be negative? And the re answer to that is no. Remember, um, e to the x is always positive, so 9 plus something always positive will always be positive. So I can write this um, specific one as the natural log of the quantity 9 plus e to the x plus c. How about the third example? Well, here I have the integral of x squared times the cosine of 2x cubed minus 4 dx. Now, cosine is acting on this 2x cubed minus 4. And then I have this other factor of x squared and the dx. So when an action is happening on an expression, and that expression's derivative is different from just one, then u substitutions is what you want to work on and try. So we are going to let u represent that that's being acted on. Not the action, just what's being acted on. So it's cosine 
of this expression 2x cubed minus 4. So we're going to let u equal 2x cubed minus 4. Now, figure out the differential over here. Don't look up there. Just look at what you assigned your u to represent. And the differential du is going to be 6x squared. The derivative of negative 4 is 0, and then dx. So now when we're looking at this, we now look back and see what we have. I've got cosine of the u, and I have x squared dx, but I don't have this factor of 6. And, but 6 is a number. It's a multiplication of a number. So I can fix that, or I can manipulate that, and I can do it in one of two places. I'm going to work with it down in our differential. So I can divide both sides of this by 6 to say 1 sixth du is the replacement for x squared dx. And again, it has to be only a numerical factor that we're off by in order to be able to do this. Now, let's make our replacements. We have our integral. The x squared dx, those two combined, see the x squared dx, that'll come out and a 1 sixth du goes in its place. So those two combined get replaced by a 1 sixth du. And then the u is going to go in for the 2x cubed minus 4. So then we have cosine of u. And this 1 sixth factor, remember there was a rule with indefinite integrals that we can bring constant factors out in front of the integral. So I have 1 sixth times the integral cosine u du. The integral of cosine u is sine u. So we'll have 1 sixth sine u and then plus c. And then to finish off, you take out the u and put the expression it represented back in. So we have 1 sixth times the sine of that 2x cubed minus 4 plus c. Remember what you've written down and what you've assigned it to be.